So when should you calibrate your drone? You know, I get asked that question a lot. Today I'm going to provide a few situations where a calibration is recommended, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when a badly calibrated drone is showing the toilet bowl effect. When should you calibrate? That's a question every drone pilot must answer for him or herself. Some people calibrate frequently, particularly if they're traveling long distances between flight locations. On the other hand, on a discussion forum I participate in, a few DJI representatives said you should calibrate less often, only when you see signs that there's a problem. Their reasoning was that having a failed calibration could present more risk than flying when a tune-up might be needed. Then there's this. From the Autel Evo Lite user manual, we find this guidance. The compass has been calibrated in factory with no need for calibration by user normally. If the compass indicates the error information or the flight direction of the aircraft is not consistent with the control input or the flight place is far from the calibrated distance, please carry out the following calibration procedure. <laughs> there's lots of confusion about this subject. So, what do I think? First, you should always follow the manufacturer's instructions for calibrations. Each drone is different, and the manufacturer has the responsibility to provide guidance specifically for their flight systems. After that, here's how I approach calibrations. When I get a new drone, I will generally calibrate the compass, IMU, and gimbal. The drone has traveled a long way and bounced around in a shipping container, so it makes sense to tune things up when you take it out of the box. I also do calibrations when I do a firmware update. I figure I'm updating the firmware on the flight system, so that's a good time to do a calibration. It's like changing the oil or rotating your tires periodically. The third situation for a calibration is when the drone tells you to. Sometimes you get a message on your app that the drone requires recalibration. Now that's easy enough to figure out. But you can also see that a calibration is needed when the drone flies in a certain way. This is less easy to figure out. Erratic flight behavior could be caused by wind, interference in the area, or a few other causes. So what does a flying drone look like when it needs calibration? Typically, a drone with this problem will make a circling pattern while hovering. Pilots refer to this as toilet bowling. Here are a few examples of drones flying the toilet pole effect. When I fly, I almost always launch the drone and let it hover for several seconds. I do this so I can observe the aircraft, looking for a drift that could suggest a poor connection, or the toilet bowl effect that tells me a calibration is needed. If you see your drone making this kind of circling motion while hovering, or it doesn't seem to follow your stick commands correctly, land the drone and do your calibrations. If the calibrations don't solve the issue, you probably want to call the manufacturer and see if they can suggest something else. One other situation when a calibration is needed is when you crash. After a crash or hard landing, you may want to recalibrate the drone to correct what the collision may have done to your system's proper balance. Many drones will allow you to calibrate your compass. I think a gimbal calibration is needed if the camera is tilted slightly to the horizon. Look at this clip here. You can see the horizon, which should be straight, is actually tilted with the left side slightly lower. If you want to be sure, most drones allow you to put horizontal and vertical lines on your screen to help with the rule of thirds. You can also tilt your gimbal so the horizontal line runs along the horizon. This makes it easy to see if there's any tilt to your image. In some cases, even a gimbal calibration won't fix the tilt. Many drones allow you to adjust the gimbal tilt manually, so you can fix a slanted gimbal even before you start recording. 
for me, a gimbal calibration is very rarely needed. Uh, I think Autel drones tend to require that more often than any other drones, but really that's just my experience. That's how I approach calibrations with my drones. Do the calibrations when you get drones or when you do firmware updates. Then look for unusual behavior in your flights. Now that you know what the toilet bowl pattern or the tilted horizon looks like, you'll recognize when your drone is telling you a calibration is needed. If you found this tutorial to be helpful, please leave a thumbs up and a comment below. And on screen are more drone videos, so be sure to check those out. But before you go, hit the subscribe button so you, and click the bell icon so you'll know when I publish again.